Hello, and welcome to USA Today's The Excerpt. I'm Dana Taylor. From laptops to electric cars, lithium-ion batteries are in so many of the products we use every day. It's hard to imagine there is an alternative. But a half century ago, sodium-ion batteries were also on the table as an option. Today, with metals like lithium harder and more expensive to source, electronics firms are taking another look at sodium ion to power our modern devices. With greater availability, lower manufacturing costs, and more stable chemistry, could sodium ion batteries be the key to powering our future? To answer these questions and more, I'm now joined by Shirley Munn, a University of Chicago professor and material scientist who has studied sodium ion batteries. Thanks for joining us on the excerpt, Shirley. Pleasure to be here. Let's talk about sodium ion versus lithium ion batteries. What are the advantages and disadvantages of each? So um, imagine that the working ions is the bigger ions. So many people think the bigger ions will be slower, uh, when, meaning when you charge, discharge the battery, the ions move at a slower speed. But that's the wrong assumption. Actually, scientifically, we have proven that sodium ions can actually move very, very quickly between the negative and the positive electrodes. So one of the major advantages that sodium ions uh, provide is that the device tend to be more power and actually enabling more fast charging capability. So we are actually very excited about the physical properties of the sodium ion. And the second very important uh, uh, consequences of the physical properties of the sodium ion is that uh, uh, you can enable lower temperature operation. So I'm from Chicago, as you can see. Uh, sometimes Chicago's weather can be a little bit of problematic for lithium ion batteries. Actually, sodium ion can provide a solution for the lower temperature operation because the high reactivity of sodium ion, they tend to perform very well at lower temperature. So there, these are just a couple examples of sodium ion's uh, advantages. I can go on and on for another 20 minutes, but let's talk a little bit about the sodium ion's disadvantage. So the voltage in the past, so in, in a battery, uh, the electrochemical potential between, so sorry, I used the jargon, but basically the voltage between the positive and the negative electrodes uh, in the sodium ion batteries uh, in the past has tend to be lower than that of the lithium ion battery. So a lot of the transistors or a lot of the mobile devices, you know, very difficult to build up the voltage to operate. However, we have solved this problem. Actually, the varieties in chemistry, sodium chemistry, that allow the sodium ion batteries to operate near 4 volt, just like lithium ion, has been invented. So uh, I think, uh, you know, although it's a nascent technology, it's still new. So, of course, uh, we fell behind in terms of economy of scales, so the cost for sodium ion batteries, even though eventually it will reach to a lower price. Uh, however, at the moment, sodium ion cannot compete with lithium ion for the uh, cost. And the, you know this is one of the major challenges all of us are facing. Uh, because of the cost that cannot compete, so general public still cannot access the low cost of sodium ion batteries at this moment. Uh, so we are hoping some smart investors could see the potential of the sodium ion batteries and then really not thinking about sodium ion batteries are here to replace lithium ion. Lithium ion batteries are not replaceable. It will continue to be with us for the decades to come and power many of the important electronic devices around us. But sodium ion batteries can provide additional values uh, to our society. So I think it, we will see sodium ion battery as a very good complement to the lithium ion batteries. With regards to environmental impact, do sodium ion batteries have an edge over lithium ion? So this is a very good question, and it really deserves some uh, explanations here. I think the first thing I would really emphasize is that all batteries, lithium ion or sodium ion batteries, are not renewables. So batteries are made with chemical elements. So we start from mining these elements from the ground, from sodium uh, brime or lithium brime, that we have to extract those elements. And inside a device, we also have transition metals like iron, manganese, uh, cobalt, nickel, 
Although in the sodium ion batteries, the chemistry we invented can completely eliminate cobalt and nickel, uh, like what we need in lithium ion batteries, a lot of nickel, a lot of cobalt were used. But in sodium ion batteries, we have the options not to using those elements. Um, one more thing is sodium ion batteries also do not use copper as the current collector. Uh, copper is actually a very important uh, current collector. Basically, it's a component to allow uh, the electrons to flow. Uh, but uh, in the sodium ion batteries, we can just use the cheap aluminum. So in principle, yes, sodium ion batteries has the potential to have lower environmental impact because we don't use what we call the critical elements like lithium, cobalt, nickel, copper. But, you know, in the bigger picture, all of us have to recognize that uh, uh, any batteries we have to mine the elements, we have to do manufacturing, we have to do the recycling. Uh, so I think when we talk about the true environmental impact of battery device, we need to think about how we can ensure the circularity of battery materials. So uh, until the uh, scientists like us or engineers like us figure out the ultimate way to recycle 100% all the materials in the batteries, uh, I think we still have a lot of work uh, to do to ensure the environmental minimum impact of environment for sodium ion batteries. The U.S. is lagging behind China in the manufacture and development of sodium ion technology. Why is that? And what would it take for the U.S. to catch up? I would share some of my personal experience uh, from year 2000. Uh, that's the year when I started doing my PhD uh, in lithium-ion batteries. Uh, Japan just uh, commercialized the lithium-ion battery in 1992. So a few years later, every country, every continent started looking at uh, this lithium-ion battery manufacturing production. And at that time, uh, I would say that uh, uh, based my own observation, I think a lot of the co uh, companies in the Western Hemisphere uh, decided not to go after the manufacturing because of the low profit margin. And the fail failure to rec recognize what batteries can empower, what batteries can enable. So let me be very clear. I think uh, sodium ion battery manufacturing will follow similar pathway as lithium ion batteries. So the manufacturing itself is difficult, is hard. It is low profit margin. However, we must look beyond what the battery itself, the cost. However, we, we should think about what they can enable, what they can, for, for example, lithium ion batteries had the revolution in the mobile devices. Apple would not be successful without lithium ion batteries. Uh, and Tesla would not be so successful without lithium ion batteries. So let's imagine what the sodium ion batteries could enable on our modern grid, on our future home. So I, I really think that uh, we will face the same challenge uh, because the uh, manufacturing as a whole, the Western part of the world have fell behind because the requirement for the supply chain, for the manpower, and also profit margin. Uh, but let me say this, I think in the attempt to bring manufacturing back to U.S., I think along the pathway, we're going to see lithium-ion batteries coming back to the U.S. for manufacturing. And while we build up the uh, expertise, the know-how of lithium-ion batteries, uh, the manufacturing for sodium-ion batteries will benefit and uh, we will catch up. I certainly hope that uh, uh, many of the companies who are involved in this business are uh, you know, uh, competing for price with China is not a smart strategy. Uh, throughout the history, uh, you know, <laughs> I think the U.S. and Europe have always uh, produced the things that people desire and compete at performance, compete at what values we provide for the product. So I think we can focus on that. Then the next generation modern sodium ion batteries can and will be produced uh, in U.S. Uh, in this soil. A persistent hurdle for clean energy development here in the U.S. has been how to store it for later use. This applies to both wind and solar power. 
Meanwhile, China has been using sodium ion batteries for energy storage systems to create stable power networks. How might that work here in the U.S. and what kind of investment would that take? So this question is very difficult to answer. Um, one of the main reasons is that uh, uh, U.S. grid and the China grid are two completely different systems. Actually, China's grid is nationalized, uh, so they have you know a very uniform rules about how the grid is run. And the U.S.'s grids are very fragmented and privatized. So uh, I think that. Uh, uh, so the two sides of the coin is uh, on one side, yes, sodium ion battery will be able to play a very significant role, just like uh, lithium ion batteries. Uh, if you check the California ISO system, lithium ion batteries already been playing key critical role in stabilizing the grid. So lithium ion batteries can do the same. However, penetration of lithium ion batteries have over the past two decades, met many obstacles and still facing a lot of challenges, particularly in the market, like longer duration, you know, maybe four to eight hours, uh, overnight shifts and something like that. So I think that uh, the other side of the coin is really the policy, uh, the incentives that provide to the battery uh, providers that how we can accelerate the implement implementation of the sodium ion batteries. And the last the missing piece for all of those uh, using batteries for the grid storage is because the battery size is going to be gigantic. You know, we're talking about hundreds of megawatt hour. So imagine it's like putting tens of thousands of Tesla cars together for uh, uh, storing the grid energy. However, the chemistry has to be really safe because people uh, driving smaller cars, you can always abandon the car and handle the safety incident. But in the gigantic grid storage device, well, we must ensure much better safety. And that I think uh, for us is one of the major hurdles. And uh, when we talk about uh, the fragmented uh, US grid, how each of the states, each of the grid system can handle this kind of challenges uh, is a, remains to be a big question uh, for now. Politically, the Trump administration has rolled back many of the government-funded manufacturing and consumer incentives for electric vehicles. Are there any industrial incentives that might tip the scales toward sodium ion use anyway? Can you talk me through that, please? Yes, I think... Uh, for our entire community, we are a little bit disappointed with the um, lack of incentives in the current administration. But uh, as a, a battery scientist who have worked in this area for 25 years uh, since my PhD time, uh, then I will tell you this is not the worst time we have experienced. We have experienced the worst. And right now, just as you mentioned, uh, the industry compared to 25 years ago, we have a trillion dollar industry backing us. And we have also many public opinions are gearing towards people have experienced the electric cars. People have, uh, uh, you know, benefited from how much values, you know, batteries have become so ubiquitous that you don't even pay attention because you use them every day, everywhere. So I would say that uh, I remain optimistic that uh, companies uh, together with the um, uh, government agencies, especially the Fed, uh, the, the state level uh, governments, uh, we will trailblaze a pathway where the incentives is not the key critical enabler, but the economic benefits, the value added uh, products to the public uh, become the main incentives why we're going for electrification. Uh, and as a scientist who worked in this area for so long, uh, I would say electrification is unstoppable. Uh, it will happen. And the current uh, setback is temporary. And the many, many smart people are working in this area. So I'm really quite cautiously optimistic about the future of electrification. We appreciate your expertise here, Shirley. Thank you so much for being on the excerpt. Pleasure. Thanks for watching. I'm Dana Taylor. I'll see you next time.